Hi, we're going to continue our study of functions by looking at a problem where we have to find the range of a function given its domain. So let's have a look at our problem. We want to find the range of this function here, x squared minus 4x plus 1, given the domain, which is this thing here, right? So you have to remember from the previous uh, video, what is domain and what is range? Well, the domain is the set of all possible input values and the range is the set of all possible output values, right? So the domain is given there, the input values are from negative one to three, and we're asked to find the range, which is all of the possible output values, that is the y values. So how are we gonna do this? Well, the best way to do all of these questions is to sketch out the function, right? We're not sketching the function for fun, we're not doing it to waste time, we're not doing it because it looks pretty, we're doing it because it's really necessary to understand how to do these problems. So let's think about how we can sketch. We're going to take our function here, f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 1. How are we going to sketch that? Well, let's do completing the square. We did completing the square a little while ago. We complete the square like this. We take the negative 4, we half it, so we get negative 2, and we subtract that negative 2 squared to get that. So the whole point is that this thing here in green is equal to this thing there in green. Okay. If we simplify that, we're going to get x minus 2 squared minus 4 plus 1, which is minus 3, right? So that is our function there. And what does that function mean? Well, if you recall back, this thing here means that the graph of y equals x squared is shifted to the right by 2, right? It's shifted in the x direction by 2. And this thing here, the minus 3, is this is shifted down by 3. Okay, so if I was then to draw out the graph, Let's try to draw it out. Remember, I'm just doing a sketch, right? So it doesn't have to be super duper accurate. Okay. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, two, four. Okay, so again, it doesn't have to be too neat. Just want to get an idea of what's going on. Then what's our key point? Our key point is the minimum point, which is 2, negative 3, right? That's the minimum point that the graph goes through. We also should know that the uh, y-intercept there is going to be 1, right? If we just look at our function. So what we should get is we should get a graph, and this is probably going to look horrible, so my apologies. It'll look something like all that. Okay, so that's the function f of x. Now then, remember our domain, right? The domain says we're only interested in values from x is negative 1 to x is positive 3. So in other words, we're only interested in these values of x. And if that's the case, then actually we're only interested in, in the graph for certain values, right? So if I was to draw up, to go up to here. Dot, 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 I'm only interested in the graph from that point all the way to that point. Okay, so this is the area of the graph that I'm interested in, the bit that's highlighted in green. I'm interested in that part there. Can you see that? Because that's the value of the graph that is defined between negative one and three. So if that's the case, then what are the possible output values I, I can have, right? What are the potential y's? Well, to get that, what we need is we need to find the lowest value of y and also the highest value of y. But if you look at it, the lowest value is here, isn't it, right? The lowest value there is when y is equal to negative 3. And the highest value of y is here, right? That, if we calculate that right, we need to calculate when x is 1. Let's just do that for a second. When x is equal to negative 1, the function, 
will be equal to negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times by negative 1, which is plus 4, plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 6. So that value there is y is equal to 6. You see what we've got is we've got the lowest value of y, and we've got the highest value of y, so that means that we can then get the, do uh, get the range. The range is therefore going to be y must be greater than or equal to negative 3, and it must be less than or equal to 6, right? Because the output values are any value between negative 3 and 6. Now, I'm hoping that you can see why sketching has been so important, because if instead of sketching, you had just calculated the value of y at this point, right, when x is equal to 3, you would have got the wrong minimum value, right? You would have got the wrong value for the range. So by sketching it, what you can do is you can actually see what is the biggest value of y and what is the smallest value of y, and then work accordingly. Okay, so how to find the, the range of a function given its domain? The key thing is, is to sketch out the function and then ask yourself the question, what is the smallest value of y? and What is the largest value of y? And that will give you a range. Thanks, guys. I hope that was helpful. I will see you again next time.